welcome your host, Moishe, to another episode of Table Talk with Moishe Ufne. Ah, ah, another cold day here on the studio set. When will this recession end? Ah. Well, in the meantime, we have with us today a special guest, my old friend, Rabbi Shlomo. Come out, Shlomo. Shalom there, Hebrew homie. It's great to be here. What's that broom for? Well, Moshe, I brought my broom along to try to sweep out the cloud dust in front of something called the Global Poverty Act. Sounds like something good, but when you sweep that dust away, all that's left is a pile of garbage. Garbage? I love garbage. Not this kind, Moshe. The first statement of the act describes a taxation on the citizens of the United States, and this tax is to be given to the United Nations. They can use these funds any way they deem reasonable. Ah, more taxes. That's right, because the Global Poverty Act is really just a global tax. It will increase the U.S. foreign aid to $65 billion a year, or $800 billion over the next 13 years. Wow, Rabbi, doesn't the U.S. pay out billions in aid while the economy sits like a dying duck? That's an interesting way to put it, but that really is not the worst of it. See, the money from the tax wouldn't actually be spent on the poverty of the world. Rather, according to Senator Obama, it would be spent for three United Nations goals. The first is the creation of a U.N. international criminal court system having the power to try and convict American citizens and U.S. soldiers without any protection from the U.S. Constitution. The second... Whoa, whoa, whoa! You mean even the U.S. has a judicial court system for its citizens, they can be tried in a world court instead? And not have any of their rights under the Constitution? What's the point of that? Well, when this, if you break a world law, you're tried in a world court. It's all part of setting up a global government system, and yes, it will be used to convict those who rebel against the laws of the global system. Wouldn't you need an army to enforce all that? You sure would. And that's exactly what the second agenda of this is. The tax dollars collected would go to create a standing United Nations army that would enforce U.S. soldiers to serve under U.N. command. Now wait a minute. This is getting to be a little absurd. The U.S. already has its own generals and commanders. I just don't understand the point. Well, sooner or later, Moishe, all the armies of the world will be obsolete. There will be just one army and one global government, and all of this will help to usher that era in. Reminds me of World War II and the Third Reich of Hitler's Germany. Many different armies of sovereignty were conquered and imprisoned in concentration camps during the Holocaust. Conform or die. It's sad, Moishe. So, Rabbi, what's the last agenda of this bill? Well, that one pertains to the U.S. mainly. It consists of a gun ban on all small, small arms and light weapons, basically nullifying the Second Amendment of the Constitution. Now, you can only imagine how people who enjoy this right, or, for example, love to hunt, will react when this is finally enforced. Civil unrest will be on the horizon if this bill goes through. Ugh! I don't even want to think about it. Isn't there something we can do? I'm afraid not, old friend. But you need to do... You need to remember that Hashem has all things in His hands. Here, turn to Psalms 2. Reshi, Semot, Malaki, Telahim. Here we are, Psalms 2. This is why I said that we can do nothing to stop it. See, Moshe, Hashem is a keeping covenant God, and He made a covenant with His people, Israel, and promised to establish His kingdom upon the earth. And this will, res this will begin the restoration of all the borders of physical Israel being reestablished exactly. 
to a specification that Hashem spoke to us. Do you know what that means then? No, what? That means no world government, no world court system, no UN commanded army can stop this covenant from being fulfilled. When Yeshua, the true and only Melech, or King of Israel, returns, he will sit upon his throne in Yerushalayim and reign in truth and righteousness. That's a good word, Rabbi. Toda Rabbah for coming and sharing with us. No, Toda Rabbah, why Shay for having me? Well, that's another episode of Table Talk with me, your host, Moshe Ufnit. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time, Shalom, Shalom. <laughs>